show you is the next bit here um, in, in uh, some of the automation features that are available to you. And um, that is to leverage um, some quoting automation. Um, some businesses have simple quotes, other businesses have complex quotes, right? So um, what I'm gonna show you now is two options, one for a uh, simple quote uh, or estimate and one for a more complex quote that may include things like a contract or a statement of work or a more complex proposal. So if your company just sends out simple estimates that can be easily you know, all you need is a couple of line items and it's a one pager and it just looks like an estimate typically looks. Um, you can leverage uh, Zoho Books, um, the Zoho Books connection to the CRM. And let me just show you how to find that here. So I've already created the integration, which isn't difficult to do between the CRM and Zoho Books. And we can come down here to the Zoho Finance area. Zoho Finance is not an application itself. It is the connector between the CRM, Zoho Inventory, if you use that, and, um, and Zoho Books. So it kind of just creates a, a connection. And what it allows us to do here, so imagine again, thinking if we're, we're a sales rep, we've converted this lead, and now they're in here and they say, we've had our demo meeting and now they want a quote and we say, sure. Simple quote, we can just stay right here on the deal record and we can just go right ahead and we're gonna say, we're gonna send a new estimate. What this is doing right now is it's pulling actually Zoho Books into the CRM. Um, so Zoho Books has some nicer um, quote and invoicing uh, templates than Zoho CRM has just by itself. So just calling that out. The other thing to mention here is some of you might say, well, Ryan, that's nice and everything, but we don't really use Zoho Books for accounting. And it's like, that's totally fine. We have um, quite a number of clients that leverage Zoho Books to send out estimates and invoices, but don't use it for accounting. Um, we just create a little integration between Zoho Books and their actual accounting system, um, whether it's QuickBooks or Sage or whatever. The power here is the power of this is that you're creating you're creating a very seamless process and empowering your reps to complete the sales cycle from a single location. And it, it, it can really save a lot of time and also centralize record keeping. So here, just to finish my example, in a simple estimate solution, just remember we just came from the deal record. We can come here, we can um, quickly populate a couple of um, line items um, into our item details, let's so say security audit, and you know the rate's going to be five thousand dollars, and and off we go, right? So we can we can very quickly um, save and send this estimate out to the customer at this stage. So we can just save that. So what's nice about this is now just coming back again. We're back on the deal record, just for reference here. What's nice about this is now we're at that proposal price quote stage and the invoice, or sorry, the um, estimate has been sent and it just lives right here. So it's from, from, from the single deal record, you sent the estimate, it lives right here. And you can do cool things with this as well as you can have the customer, um, if you enable the customer portal through Zoho Books, you can have the customer review and accept the quote directly online and then you can get a notification when the estimate has been accepted. So you, you can essentially automate the process by which the quote's gone out, customer clicks, yes, I accept. You get an email notification back, hey, this is accepted. And it allows you to manage that process. And you can get automatic reminders going out to customers as well. So you don't, things don't slip through the cracks. Um, so this can be a very powerful uh, feature. Um, that can really cut down on the, on the amount of time, you know, in terms of sending out your estimates. This was the simple estimate example where you have simple, a few line items and it just goes out for approval. Let's, let's cover the more complex case. Um, the more complex case is where you're dealing with statements of work, proposals, contracts, wholesale applications, things that require some more fine print and um, 
we can say from personal experience and also working with a lot of clients that have these type of um, documents, they can be incredibly time consuming and um, prone to uh, human error, right? So one thing I wanna show you here is that all that data that we've been pulling through from the lead from the leads journey into the deals journey, so it should be living all right here in the deal. Um, we want to be able to leverage that um, and uh, just with a couple of clicks, fold it into that agreement, just inject it automatically and get it sent off to the client for could be e-sign, all of that is possible. So let me, let me show you an example here of a complex quote process. So the first thing to show you, I've customized this deal record a little bit for a kind of project-based proposal. I come in here and I've created a custom section called proposal details. So I'm gonna do something simple here, like have a project start date. So let's say the project is starting, we're proposing to start this on, let's say next week, Wednesday. And this project is going to take, let's say it's going to take a month. Let's say it goes through uh, a full month. And um, here I've created a little section called proposal deliverables. So here I'm using something um, called a sub form. So th these are nice little um, tables that you can just inject right into your deal record. And it's sort of a nice halfway point between actually having to have um, a, a really detailed, a really detailed sort of like inventory that you're putting into something. Many companies that we've worked with, when they're at the quoting stage, they don't really want to be putting a bunch of SKUs onto a quote, or they don't necessarily want to get too detailed um, with their line items. They want you to just say, you know, we're going to provide you with these five things and have the flexibility to put in a bit of a description and then fold that into the contract. And then if the client signs, then okay, they could get more detailed after that. So here's an example of a project-based proposal. We say, okay, the deliverable one here is going to be um, uh, security. We'll say this is a security audit of company Azure uh, platform. And maybe this description is something like the team will do an in-depth um, analysis of the client's current security posture. Okay, so we say that, that maybe that's, maybe that's you, you can have, we can add multiple deliverables and multiple descriptions here. And then again, so this is just an example. Think, all you need to do is sort of think about how this might apply to your own uh, quoting process. And then down here in proposal pricing, again, this is, I showed you a previous example of a simple quote, which can easily be done through Zoho Books. This is a more complex quote where um, we want to, we don't necessarily have like products per se, but we want to kind of put something, a few line items in. So here, what I've done is I've created a system where it's like, here's some service areas. So we'll say this is a security audit and description is, you know, review of security, posture, the quantity is one and the rate, maybe the standard rate for that service is $500, $5,000. And we're gonna add one more pricing row here, which is um, well, this, in this fictional example, this, this company that I'm working for also has a license to their platform. So we'll say this is five times, um, uh, platform license, right? And we'll say the quantity is five and they're $50 each for the license. So then we get this nice little sort of table. We, we get this aggregate proposal total at the bottom, right? So we save our proposal. Okay, so that's just a couple examples there of how, you, how there's some options inside the CRM to kind of take what you might be currently doing already manually, which is, you know, some of these things you, you would naturally need to do. But now um, what we're going to turn to is how you can use um, a, a quote merge function to just dump this into your standard quote or proposal or statement of work. So it lives here, up here in the top right corner in a feature called mail merge. So if we come up here to mail merge and give that a click, 
um, what we get is this little dialogue pop and you'll notice it says Zoho Writer. So in this case, Zoho Writer is, it, this is included with, if you've got the Zoho One licensing and um, Zoho Writer is our sort of first stop on an app, separate Zoho application. It's the equivalent of kind of in oh, like, Microsoft Word online type application. It's where you can do sort of document editing and management. So I've just created a little um, demo statement of work proposal there that I just uploaded as a template. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna choose that and we're gonna merge the data that we just entered into that document. So these always take a, um, a few seconds to load here. So bear with me, it's gonna think about it. And then what we're gonna get is we're gonna get an admin bar pop up on the left-hand side. There we go. Okay, so what are we looking at here? This is just, you know, imagine your own company's proposal or a statement of work or contract, whatever it happens to be here. And what we're, what we're doing here, the whole point of this is to demonstrate to you something which is pretty handy, which is the ability to um, auto inject the fields from the CRM into the proposal. So, um, for example, right now, this is a statement of work and it says for, and you'll say deals.account name, right? So if we do a little preview of what that, of what this is going to look like when it's ready to go, I can just do preview merge here. So you'll see that the client's name in here, RFDM insurance solutions is automatically popped in. So if I'm just, uh, what, what your um, sales team would be doing here is uh, not having to recreate these manually every time, but actually just merge it from the deal data, right? And if I want to add in here, for example, I want to add in the name of the um, sales team member who is creating this for the client. We can just um, throw in a created by and then you'll, you'll notice over here, you've got your field set and um, the deal owner would be the uh, sales team member who's creating this. So we're just going to put in deal deals owner, right? And then we can preview that, preview that again. And then, you know, the name of this account, that license that I'm working under right now is just called RFDM demo. So this is the first name and last name, right? So you, you can very easily start to inject this data. So to come back to our, where I was working on the deal record there, and I was putting in the proposal deliverables and start dates and end dates and all that stuff. Now we can all scroll down here and show you how that is applied. So you can see here, we've got project deliverables um, uh, as those merge fields. And then what we can do here is I'm just gonna add um, the project start date. I'm going to put the project end date and the project duration is just a little formula field that I created in the CRM that goes project end date minus project start date, um, which returns the amount of minutes between those two date intervals. And then you multiply that by, or so you divide that by the amount of minutes in say a, a week. And that would give you the week's duration. You could do months. Um, to, to just do a simple duration calculation. So we put that in and then, you know, we come down here to our, um, maybe like our pricing table. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually get rid of this table here. And what I'll do is I'm gonna inject, I think one of the more powerful features here is these abilities to inject these subforms. So here, you'll see here main fields that are inside um, our, our deal record. So thinking back, all of these fields here are what are actually right on that deal record we were looking at previously. So I'm going to come in here to subfields and you'll see here those subforms that I was playing with earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take um, uh, the project pricing and I'm just going to select all here. I'm going to bring this in and I'm just going to insert this as a table. So you'll see that pops in and I mean, this comes in with some standard formatting, but the nice thing about Zoho Writer is you can format all of this, you can change the table as you'd like. So we've injected the data now, and then what I'm gonna do is just preview this merge. It's 
thinking about it. And um, we come down here to the uh, pricing table and you can see it's just sort of automatically injecting what we entered into the um, onto the deal record. And this, the applications here, um, you know, extend to terms and conditions. They extend to uh, descriptions of your of your deliverables, as I was demonstrating demonstrating earlier. Um, so the applications are are big here. If you you run any type of complex quote, right? So once you're satisfied, you know, you're you've you've got these templates set up. It's very quick, of course, to create them. And then you know, when you're ready to send these you can run the merge and then you've got a bunch of options here you can you can just merge it and save it as a document you can send this to the client by email or one thing we've been doing a lot for our clients lately is sending sending out contracts for signing and we've just create the integration with zoho signs so what's really nice here is you can just when you're ready to go you can send a merge and send this for sign collection you run the merge and then um, you know you put in the signer and so on and so forth, and off it goes, right? So once this is sent, um, the nice thing is is that you know you can have this saved back onto the CRM deal record. You can get notifications when the client signed it. You can send automatic reminders to the client, so you don't have to um, uh, re remember to to bug them about it. So you have all that tracking capability.